I've reread one of the best fantasy books ever witnessed or published. Hello, fellow book questers, it is I, Aaron the Book Quester, and today I reread this awesome epic book Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone by J.K. Rowling herself and well let's get right on to it so i'll i'll pretty much go over like the like the actual plot really quickly because i'm sure most of you read harry potter and for the people who you haven't well you've been living under a rock for the past how no one knows how long if you love books if you even remotely like books or read books you read harry potter they are great so let's start boy harry potter he lives with this horrible aunt and uncle the dursleys they are pretty much quite quite evil and they shut him in a broom closet and basically all in all they're horrible mean people and what harry doesn't know however is that he is special and one day on dursley's birthday he starts to receive letters letters that mr mr dursley seems to like not want harry to read the red letter and never ever lets Harry read the letter, and then finally, Dursley goes completely mad and runs away to a runaway shack. However, because of this, Hagrid, a huge giant-like man, came in and told Harry, You are a wizard. And so, Harry was going to his school, a new school, well, the best wizarding school of all time, scratch out the new, the best wizarding school of all time, Hogwarts. Which is pretty awesome, I mean, imagine going to Hogwarts. And Harry goes to shopping diagonal diagonally, and finally he goes to Hogwarts. There he makes friends with Ron Weasley and Hermione Granger, and together they go on several adventures in the school, and then they find out that a legendary artifact known as the Philosopher's Stone is hidden within the school due to the fact that Dumbledore, Albus Dumbledore, the headmaster of the school, wanted it under his protection. And they see they know that Snape, Professor Snape, who is the who is their potions teacher, they he seems to want to steal the stone. And he had sent Dumbledore away on a fake mission so that he could probably take the stone for himself. Because of this, the students decide that they were gonna take the stone first before Quirrell or Snape could even find them. I kind of spoiled it, didn't I? It wasn't Snape. After they went through the several different stages of danger, it first started with Devil's Snare, which is a this, this crazy plant that can only be killed by fire. Then they had to go through and they had to grab, find, grab a key from one of the many keys that had wings. And then finally, and then finally they had to um, they had to fight through a magical chess piece. Then they had to go through like a potions test. Then they had to go through well, a troll, but the troll was already pretty much broken down and dead. And when they went in, they found not Snape. Well, Harry went in. They found not Snape, but Quirrell. Professor Quirrell, who was supposed to be the teacher for the defense against the dark arts. He is a pretty much this weird teacher that stammers all the time. But now we find out that he is actually Lord Voldemort's servant, and he wants to get the Philosopher's Stone for his master. And then, and then, Coral or Voldemort, Voldemort was inside Coral's head as well. They tried to force the secret out of Harry. Where was the Philosopher's Stone? Because Harry, through the mirror, saw where the through the mirror of the eyes, which is like a magical mirror that shows you your greatest desire. Basically, what Harry did was that he looked at the mirror and he saw the stone inside his pocket. And then he suddenly felt a weight in his pocket and he realized it was in his pocket. And the fact was that Quirrell didn't know this, but Voldemort knew that Harry was hiding something. So he wanted Quirrell to kill Harry. And Quirrell went over there and tried to kill him, but Harry seems to was so seems to have some sort of magical word on him because instantly when Quirrell touches him his hand starts to blister and then finally Quirrell is destroyed and then he's rescued by Dumbledore and finally the book is over that's what happened so that was the quick little 
with a little plot. And a couple things that I do want to say. Um, after learning that Santa wasn't real and all that, Christmas kind of lost its magic, you know? Christmas isn't that big in Korea anyway, and I really- Christmas was just another day in the winter. It really didn't matter for me, and that sense of wonder and excitement that you get at Christmas, I lost all of that. But when I read this, reread this book, I felt that same wonder, the same wonder that I felt at Christmas, creeping into me like a warm cup of tea. And I really, really enjoyed it. And I remembered why J.K. Rowling was one of the best-selling authors of all time. And also, I noticed a bit of a mistake that the movies made. You see, in the movies, Dumbledore has a pot belly. However, in the book, it says Dumbledore is thin as a skeleton. And as you can see, even from the picture in behind, you can see that Dumbledore has a very slim waist. Just a minor detail. I mean, the movies got most of it right, and it's pretty awesome, but you know, just just a minor detail that I just noticed after rereading the book. And that's pretty much it. I don't have much to say about Harry Potter because, you know, it's one of the best-selling series in the world and a lot, a lot of people reviewed it, so there's not much I can say, but all I can say is that it is a great book. If you haven't read it yet, which is unlikely but possible, I think you should definitely read it. And like always, your book cluster, Aaron the book cluster, one of the best fantasies of all time. And yeah, the warm feeling of Christmas creeping into you again, even if you're an adult, or even if you're a teen. Bye!